What's more, um, we can show this di diagrammatically. Yeah? Let's suppose that we've got um, price elastic demand. In other words, demand changes more than proportionally following a change in price. So let's suppose that price elastic demand is minus five. So 10% change in price is gonna to lead to a 50% change in demand. And let's imagine then that we're starting with price of 10 pounds, quantity of 100 units. And let's suppose that price falls to eight pounds, then cuts price to, um, to eight pounds. That's a 20% fall in price. So the question is, what's going to happen to demand? And the answer is, the demand is gonna change by five times as much, 100%. So essentially demand is gonna double from 100 to 200. So demand go is gonna look a bit like that. Suppose on the other hand, that demand had been, suppose on the other hand, demand had been price inelastic. So demand had, so, so price elastic demand had only been say, minus 0.5. Now, the 20% change in price would have meant that demand only went up by half as much, only went up by 10%. That would have meant that when price fell to eight pounds, demand would only have risen to 110. And you would have a very different demand curve. So what we will generally observe then, yeah, is that a demand curve that looks like that yeah, is generally price elastic, one that looks like that is generally price inelastic. However, that can be slightly, slightly misleading, yeah, just to look at the gradients of the, um, of the demand curves. Um, and the reason is that actually price elasticity demand, the formula is made up of two bits. If you take the formula, the percentage change in quantity demand divided by the percentage change in price, if you write that mathematically, yeah, that's actually the change in quantity divided by the original quantity divided by the change in price divided by the original price. If you rearrange that, you get it's the change in quantity over the change in price times price over the original quantity. Um, that bit is the slope. That bit is where you are on a demand curve. And what that means then um, is that if I was to draw the entire demand curve, we can't really say that that demand curve is either elastic or inelastic because elasticity varies along its length. I mean, probably the best way um, is if we use an example. So if we call that you know, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 pounds. Um, so let's suppose we're there with price 10 pounds, demand is 100, we cut price to 8 pounds, clearly demand is basically about doubled here. Um, so that's 100% change in price for demand for a 20% cut in price. So that's fine. So at that between those two points for the decrease in price, what we can see is that price elastic demand is minus five. The change in demand is 100%, change in price is 20%, so therefore we're getting um, a less than proportional change. But um, what about down at the bottom? What about down here? There's price of four pounds, so by extension that must be, it depends on very good, 400 units. That's two pounds, that's 500 units. So what I'm saying is when price is four pounds, demand is 400. So let's suppose we cut price here from four to two pounds. What we've got is that now price, demand has, price has been half. Then we have a 50% cut in price. But the result is demand rises by 100 units, but proportional to where it was, that's only a 25% increase in demand. So down here, price elasticity demand is only minus 0.5. Demand has become inelastic. 
And that kind of makes sense when you think about it, um, which is, that's the idea that eventually price may become so low that you've already got most of the market, yeah? In other words, let's take, yeah, let's take the price of a you know, BMW Z4. Suppose you cut it to £5,000. Well, surely everybody in the entire country is driving a BMW Z4 at that point. If you cut the price again to £2,000, well, yeah, that's a huge percentage change in price. But who else is going to buy it? You've already got everybody. Okay, so what that means, then, yeah, is when you look at a demand curve, we can say that that's an elastic demand curve because it's up in the top half. That is an inelastic demand curve because you're down in the bottom half. But if you see a straight line demand curve that's touching both axes, then up here, demand is price elastic. Demand down here, demand is price inelastic. And in the middle, at precisely the midpoint, Price elasticity demand is equal to minus one, and that's known as unitary unit from unit from one unitary elasticity. Demand is neither price elastic nor price inelastic. Apart from uh, <coughs> down sloping straight line demand curves, um, there's a couple of others um, that you might come across. Um, we talked um, a little bit earlier about the idea of price elasticity demand being zero. In other words, the idea of totally inelastic. Um, and what we mean by totally inelastic is that any change in price, any change in price, leads to no change in demand. Now, in reality, you know, there are, I think there are very few things um, that would, would actually be like that. But if we look at what that would look like on a diagram, then we'll say, well look, okay, there's price. Here's quantity demanded again. Let's suppose that we have a particular quantity at the moment, Q1, um, and price is at a particular level, um, say 10 quid. Um, so, suppose price goes up to 20 pounds. If demand is totally inelastic, then Demand is going to remain at Q1. Price goes up to £30. Again, demand remains exactly unchanged. So what you end up with is a vertical uh, demand curve. And some student once upon a time said that the way you remember this is that I for inelastic. <laughs> I'm not sure about that myself. Um, but nevertheless, the idea is that any change in price leads to no change in demand. So if you look at the formula again, the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price, then the percentage change in demand, well, whatever the percentage change in price is, you know, whether it's you know, plus 50%, or plus 100%, it doesn't really matter, the change in demand will be zero, and therefore, price elasticity demand will also be zero, meaning that any change in price leads to no change in demand. There's one other, uh, there's one other possible situation that, uh, that you might come across. Um, and that's the idea, what you've got to imagine is, uh, you've got to imagine a situation that's very, very competitive, like, um, like a market, you know, a marketplace where, where lots of different you know, lots of different um, merchants are selling the, basically the same product. Yeah? So I suppose they're all selling apples. And, um, and we're down the market on, the, you know, on, a, on a Wednesday morning, um, and the price of apples is normally you know, 70p a kilo, and we've got one trader, and he normally expects to sell you know, 20 kilos of apples um, each day. And, the point is, yeah, that the people who go and buy, the people who go and buy um, apples, yeah, there are grannies, yeah, and grannies, they have a shared network, yeah, they like, um, they like have a, a common brain, and if one of them knows about the price, soon word spreads, and all grannies know. So what's going to happen if our firm tries to increase its price from seventy p 
to 71 friends, pence per kilo. All the grannies will know. They'll know that this guy's apples are more expensive than everybody else's, and demand will fall from 20 kilos a day to nil. No one will buy from this particular individual. And what that means, therefore, is that the demand curve is completely horizontal. Even the smallest change in price calls demand to fall to zero, like that, straight to zero. So the demand curve's horizontal, and we can say that that is perfectly or totally elastic. Effectively, at any price above 70 pence, demand is zero. So really, the demand curve looks like that. So, downward sloping demand curves, the elasticity varies along their length. Here, demand is totally elastic, and again, the uh, same student said it's like an E for elastic. Yeah, um, that one is totally price inelastic. So there, price elastic demand is zero. There, price elastic demand is equal to minus infinity. And in that case, price elastic demand varies along its length, you know, being between minus one and minus infinity up at the top, equal to minus one in the middle, and naught to minus one at the bottom.